In 2019, a team of researchers working in the far north of Zambia, at the site of Kalambo Falls, made an unexpected archaeological discovery. They found wood preserved underneath the river, which would in turn out to be almost half a million years old. Not just any old wood, wood that had been worked by humans, including the remains of what looks to be the earliest structure known in the world. In this short video, I'd like to show you the excavations, take you through some of the analysis we did here in Liverpool, and also think about what these finds mean in terms of our understanding of early humans. So join me on this journey. Before we visit the excavation, I'd like to introduce you to the woodlands of Zambia. This part of Africa is blanketed in a beautiful tropical woodland, as far as the eye can see. The woods are important today, and they probably were important in the past. Woods can give you fuel for making a fire. They can provide food in terms of nuts and fruits. You can make shelters or huts. You can make tools of wood, and the bark and the leaves provide medicine, and even clothing. The bark can be stripped into clothing. That's a traditional cloth you're seeing here, which is no longer being made. It's a dying art. So if wood is so useful now and has been in the past, why aren't we finding evidence of it in the early archaeological record? And the answer lies in the fact that it's just not preserving, except in places like Colombo Falls. This is the majestic Colombo Falls, more than 230 meters high, second highest falls in Africa. But the important thing is what's behind it. It's the Colombo River and a basin which preserves the archaeological record, including wood. Here you see students excavating one of the early sites. We're finding the tools that were used, or the kind of tools that were used to make and shape the wood. And you can see a little bit of the river as we move along. This object here is being excavated with a plastic tool so it doesn't damage the edge and so we can study how it was used. This is a cleaver. It's got a strong, broad edge. You can see it curves just a little bit. And it's an excellent tool, we think, for working hard materials like wood. And you can see here a large tree trunk. And beside it, where I'm sitting, comes this wedge-shaped object. It's a tool. The most important objects, though, are these. These are overlapping pieces of wood. When we found them, we thought this was an unusual arrangement. And as we started to look at them, the piece on the top has a notch in the middle. That notch has been cut. The ends of either side of it have been tapered, and it sits on a tree beneath. But again, it's not just any tree. The tree also has been shaped. The pictures here show the white arrows, and each of these is a mark left by a stone tool. They could be scraping, they could be chopping. They're all involved in making those two pieces fit into what is the world's oldest structure. We are looking at something more than 477,000 years old here. Almost from the moment of discovery, we had to keep the wood wet, keep it from drying out, from cracking, and from losing the signs of the human working on the wood. Back here in Liverpool, we have tanks specially designed for underwater photography to build 3D models of the wood. You're seeing the camera specially developed, and the first piece that's being examined here is the wedge. Do you remember the wedge near the big tree trunk? Well, here the hands are coming down, holding the wedge, turning it around, photographs are being made. Next, we're seeing a part of the structure. This is the center section. The structure was, is, is now in three parts. It was naturally cracked over time, and this is the middle part with the notch. You're seeing JR is for photographing it in all sort of different directions, building the three-dimensional model. And here it is, the model. We can turn it over. You can look closely at the notch. And now we had the color, and I can see the cut marks on it. I can see where the wood has been removed. This is an important piece. And once we finish the analysis, we lift it carefully, removing it from its photographic bath and putting it into its storage bath. It's heavy, it's solid, and the wood is now being conserved. So once we have made the 3D models, we need to understand what those marks are telling us about the tools that were used and how they were used. And to do that, we need experimental archaeology. And here at Liverpool, we have our own ancient technologies workshop, and Chris here is an expert in making and using stone tools. 
he's making a flake of stone and he's going to use a stone which we found at Colombo Falls as the same raw material and he's going to use that to shape a wooden handle and seeing what kind of marks the stone leaves on the wood. We can then take those marks as a reference and look at the prehistoric wood and yes we do find very similar marks from scraping. In our labs in Liverpool, we also have a variety of different kinds of microscopic techniques of analysis. Nikki here is looking at the surface of the wood for any evidence of changes from fire. Our research has shown not that there is direct evidence of fire, it may be there, but that's going to be something to examine in future work. But we do have evidence that the wood is partially fossilized. And by that I mean minerals, silica, minerals dissolved in the water have actually entered the wood and replaced some of the wood structures. So that's given the wood some strength that helped it survive all these hundreds of thousands of years. We know how old the wooden objects are. We know how they were made. But the structure, it's a real enigma. What was it used for? It's not something we're familiar with today. It doesn't look like what we might think of as a structure. But we have to ask, what is a structure? Well, it's things that combined as a framework, they support something. Okay, once we have that idea, then we can start to think maybe what was it used for, how, how was it built? And to help me think about this, I turned to a childhood toy. When other kids were playing with Lego, I was in my room making log cabins from Lincoln Logs. Um, and I don't know why they came to my mind, but they, they, have, they did, and they have helped me think about the Columbo Falls structure. What's the big deal here? Well, Lincoln Logs have a notch in them, and the notch allows one piece to sit on top of another, and you can build things with this. You can build log cabins, but I'm not thinking early humans were building log cabins. But what the notch does is when you making a structure, the notch allows the framework to stay in place. You can, you can put pressure on it and it doesn't slip either left or right. And if you have two notches, but we don't in the archaeological record, then it won't slip back and forth. You have a stable surface. So it made me think we have a surface or we have some kind of framework at Colombo Falls almost 500,000 years ago. And with a framework, yes, you could build a house on you it. You could build a platform or you could build a walkway or by adding another piece on the side, you can make a platform and you can sit on the platform in the kind of wet landscape that might have been there and you maybe, um, I don't know, have your lunch there <laughs> or build a shelter there or storage, but it is a surface that will be stable and will be dry. This is teamwork, this project, and I want to thank my Zambian colleagues and all the other international partners who made this work possible. And I would like to thank the Arts and Humanities Research Council for the funding which also made this possible.